Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I'm Jada, founder of Unbound Creation. So in my last video I shared with you guys that I've recently been using a tennis ball to apply acupressure to a point, uh, a knot that had formed in my lower mid back. I started to wonder whether the pain I, I was feeling was being caused by a knot which was itself caused by fear. One day, I remembered the powerful experiences I've had with acupressure. Then I remembered that I had heard of people massaging their back using a, a tennis ball. And what happened next shocked me. <laughs> so what happened next? Well, the first thing I did was that I cried. <laughs> But honestly, that wasn't that surprising because if you've watched any of my videos, then you know that I experience crying as a form of release pretty often. <laughs> and besides, it made sense because I was alone in my room, so my body felt like it was safe to do so. What was slightly more surprising though was how much I cried and the intensity of the emotions that I felt as I did so. As I cried, all my present fears came rushing at me. All the fears that I had decided to face a few weeks before concerning my career and my creative and entrepreneurial ambitions. All the fears that who I am and what I do isn't important or appreciated. And more primal fears too, like wondering whether I would have shelter in a month or even a relative sense of safety. What was even more surprising than that though was that at the end of it all, after I was done crying, all I could do was laugh. <laughs> like belly laughs sort of laughing. See, a year or two into my spiritual journey, I started to develop a theory that I would be gradually led down the chakras, starting at the heart chakra, then back up to the throat chakra, the third eye, and eventually the crown chakra. And for a time, it seemed to hold up. Following my first heartbreak, which was an introduction to my heart chakra and my spiritual journey, I then started experiencing things which were partly caused by my heartbreak, but which also stemmed from difficulties I was having at work that triggered my solar plexus chakra and challenged me to learn how to set boundaries and raise my level of self-worth. Then I felt led to start expressing my creativity and actually bring all of my ideas to life. So I quit my job and I started Unbound Creation as I started to embrace the gifts that are tied to the sacred chakra. But then things kind of came to a halt. For a very long time, I felt like I was stuck in a loop and eventually I started wondering whether my theory was wrong and whether I would ever actually be led to start working on my root chakra, which rules shelter, safety, and the basic human needs. After all, how could I? I'm lucky to be able to say that these concerns have never been present in my life and that based on my current standing, I couldn't foresee them ever becoming issues. But that's exactly when just a few months before my lease was going to end. The housing market started going crazy, which I'm sure you guys know all about. <laughs> and I was told that my rent would be going up by $100 a month if I signed a new lease. So all of a sudden I was taken, taken from a relative sense of security and safety to not even knowing whether I would have housing in a few months. So after allowing myself to cry tears of fear, I thought to myself, this is what you get for wanting to work on your root chakra. And even though it was an objectively sobering realization, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I started laughing at my younger self, both for the false confidence I had that I would never face the possibility of having to go without my basic needs and for doubting that the universe would eventually find a way to allow me to work on opening my root chakra. 
I mean, it's good to trust that you'll always be okay, but I was taking these things for granted, and so of course, the universe responded. The last surprise I had was that after I was done crying and then laughing, I started coughing. Out of nowhere, it seemed. And it wasn't just a dry cough either. I felt like there was something stuck in my throat. After about a minute or two, and sorry if this is TMI, my cough started to cause the release of phlegm. And I was totally shocked. It literally felt like the phlegm had been produced in response to my emotions. And that there was no other real explanation. I mean, I wasn't sick or anything. But this idea felt a little woo-woo, even to me, so I tried to explain it to myself as logically as possible. I thought, yes, it was caused by my, my emotions, but probably not directly. It's just that I had been crying for a while, lying on my back, and crying can stimulate the nasal passages. But then, a week or two later, I was lying on the tennis ball again, applying pressure to the same point in my back, and again, it was bringing up my fears. Eventually, without first crying or laughing or having any other emotional response, I started coughing. That same phlegmy cough. And this time, I coughed up an even larger amount of phlegm. Suffice it to say, I immediately felt like I was in the toilet film. <laughs> This time, I couldn't explain away the direct connection between me lying on the tennis ball, applying pressure to certain points of my body, and the subsequent coughing and release of phlegm. Then I remembered that my neighbor, who's really into Qigong and traditional Chinese medicine, once told me that his TCM doctor had advised him to stop eating cream cheese because it made him phlegmy. I didn't really understand how cream cheese could do that, so I didn't take him literally at the time, and I thought that maybe it meant something different in the world of TCM. But then, as I was reflecting on the experience I just told you guys about, I eventually made the connection that physical phlegm could be produced not only in response to sickness, but also in response to the things we eat, the things we do, and the things we feel. So of course, the first thing I wanted to do was to verify whether my hunch was correct. And as it turns out, phlegm is a pathological accumulation of fluids, which are usually transformed, transported, and excreted with the help of qi. Emotional stress can cause qi deficiency or qi stagnation, and sometimes both, leading to the accumulation of fluids. In simpler terms, Emotional stress lowers qi, which results in an increase of fluids, which are then converted into phlegm. So the second thing I did after this initial confirmation that my thinking was correct was to try to verify whether this point in my mid-back was a trigger point. After a quick search, I was able to identify it as either UB22 or UB23. I know this ambiguity seems to undermine my logic, but both possibilities are interesting. Apparently, UB22 resolves dampness, opens the water passages, and regulates the transformation of fluids, which, since phlegm is an accumulation of fluids, means it's directly involved in the regulation of phlegm. Whereas UB23 is one of the most effective points to tonify the kidneys, which the kidneys affect fear, anxiety, clarity, trust, and paranoia. Also while lying on the ball, I noticed different tight spots in my glutes for the first time, and that these areas all felt like they were tethered together. It literally felt like all these knots were different anchor points running along the same rope, which initially got tauter whenever I pressed on any of them. Then I realized that I had been getting headaches more often than usual and feeling knots on the left side of my neck. So I decided to look up the different meridians and I found that the urinary bladder meridian runs all the way from the inside corner of the eye, up around the skull, down the length of the spine, directly to the sides of it, and down the back of the legs. Then I remembered that a few days earlier I had pressed a point on the inside of my thigh, which I felt was really tight. And when I looked up the kidney meridian, I found that it runs down along the inside of the thighs. 
all of this information taken together, I concluded that both my kidney and bladder meridians were blocked. Which makes sense because both of these meridians are known to be linked to the emotions of stress and fear. And when blocked can cause thirst, dark urine, sugar cravings, and headaches, all of which I had been experiencing in recent weeks. For a long time, I had heard that both acupressure and acupuncture reveal connection between things which on a purely superficial and logical level seem unrelated. Now I was experiencing it for the first time. This is an ongoing exploration of acupressure and acupuncture, so I'll make sure to update you guys on any interesting new revelations I may have as things continue to unfold but this is where I'll leave the conversation for now. If you guys have any questions or any experiences to share of your own, then please drop them in the comments below. I think this stuff is fascinating and I would love to hear if you guys have had any similar experiences or if you guys think this is all just crazy talk. In my next video, I'll be transi transitioning to talking about another branch of TCM. So if you're interested in that, then please make sure to tune back in. But as for right now, thank you so much for watching. I feel so honored to be able to share my thoughts and experiences with you guys. And I'll see you next time.